Uh, okay, right. Um, right. After doing all these tests, um, I've come. I've come to a, uh, an understanding, um, a situation. My actuator coil, obviously, the longer it is, um, the longer it is, the more um, flux is escaping. Right, basically. Um, that is because when you actually push uh, on a magnetic field, um, you know, if you if you suck on the, or pull on the magnetic field on one end, and you push it along the coil, it's a lot of the flux escapes, right? And the way to, to actually keep that flux in a tight um, tunnel, basically, is to have something else pulling on it on the other side. Now, um, I'm just going to draw something. Now, my concentric six, now I'll just draw it over here, but basically when you have, um, the magnets on the concentric facing inwards, right, what happens is, um, oh, I'm not focused on that, uh, sorry about that, my bad. Um, Right, what happens is because on the secondary that the flux field is very tight on the output on the secondary. So my magnets basically we've got say south, south, and we have north. Then we uh, I've done this wrong actually, but yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's wrong actually. That should be um, no, that's right. Oh, damn it. Right, so that's north. Right. Uh, that's south. Uh, that's uh, I'm drifting against south and uh, north, right? So when the fields are pointing inwards like this, um, basically that's the centre, right? The centre point. Um, now let's do a side view. Now let's do the side view. Um, so this is the side view of the um, the magnet array. So these are basically magnets, right, along there. Now. When the, the coil, uh, I'll just do a um, thing in my jiggers for the coil like that. So when the coil is actually pulling on this side, it's actually collapsing or bringing the, the flux lines tightly to a center point. So they're actually focused like down a tunnel. So that actually helps to focus the magnetic field on the other side. So we, ha we also have a fairly... Um, Tight. So the output of the magnetic flux coming out the other side is also fairly tight, right? Um, now, in order to amplify the situation, what I've basically decided to do is to have an actuator coil here, then I have a concentric uh, magnet array, then I have another coil on the other side. These are the actuator coils, actual um, trigger coils, right? Then I have another magnet concentric because you have to actuate the fields on both sides otherwise the fields tend to just basically um, collapse into a smaller and smaller smaller bubble so they get smaller unless you're pulling on them so to actually pull the coil on uh, pull the field on this side pull the field on this side and then pull this pull that flux across through the coil to this flux field on here uh, we'll have an, we'll have a gain basically. We should have a gain because what's happening is that the foil, the coils are assisting the flux down a tunnel, um, and we could have another coil here basically. Um, so what we're actually doing is we're keeping that flux tight down the centre core because we're pulling on it. Whenever you pull on a field, it will collapse into a tight, uh, um, tight area like a tube but when you push it on a field it expands outwards right basically so when you just push it it expands and you lose that flux it, it leaks out basically like a leaky pipe but because we're pulling on the flux we're actually channeling it through to the next magnet array so we could have another concentric over here for example and every time we do that we're reversing it so basically what happens is if we've got uh, if this coil here is north right and this end of the coil is south. Oops, I did an eight there. If this end is south, right, so what we're doing is we're subtracting north from this array here, but we're seeing south on this side here. So this one, this coil would be basically north on this end, pulling on the south. This coil would be south, 
pulling on the north of that. And and on the other side, we would see cells coming out, and the coil would be north on this side, and cells on this side, and this array would be north. So we ultimately see an output here of of cells. We should see a lot more cells coming out this end because of the way the coils are focusing that flux down a, a channel. So we see less leakage. So anyway, the, that's where I am at at the moment, and just thought I'd give you a rough idea what I'm planning on doing. But I, I need to break up my actuation coil, which is currently one long piece, and there's a lot of fluxes being leaked out. So what I basically need is to have some actuation uh, rectangular um, concentric magnet arrays. So instead of the round ones, like this one, there's no magnets in this, by the way. But instead of having the round ones, I'm going to be going for some rectangular ones because um, well, I haven't got any rectangular ones made uh, at the moment. But I'm going to have to be uh, I'm going to have to use some longer magnets for the rectangular, like these ones here. But they're going to be still thin. Um, so I'm going to have to wrap those around um, in between two coils because I'm going to start with just one in the center. So an actual uh, concentric co uh, magnet array in the center of two coils. And we're going to try that and see what the difference is. The gain, see how much gain we get. If we get a substantial amount of gain, um, then I might even break the coils up into um, four coils for the actuator. So I should be able to add even more flux um, to the actual actual um, cores that are going into the secondary. Because by the time it gets to the secondary, uh, because of leakage and energy loss and everything else, um, not a lot of it's getting through there. So, anyway, get the idea. So, I'll just update you on what I'm thinking at the moment. Thanks for watching.